her one on one, you go, wow, for real? <laughs> All of that. <laughs> and you still love God? <laughs> and you still say, and you still speak to her? But, God, <laughs> but it's, it's all about God's glory. Somebody say, it's not about me. It's not, not about, about me. It's all about God. It's, it's all, all about, about God. God. Amen. So when you read the text, we can be encouraged because we know that our sufferings uh, and everything we go through. Now, I'm not trying to make light of your suffering, your, sh your guilt, your shame, and everything that you've been through. You know, because we all been through some stuff. Some stuff we sometimes it's just hard to talk about it. We say talk about it, but sometimes mm -hmm. you can't. You gotta cry. You gotta groan. The text yeah. also mm -hmm. says that that we are groaning. You know, sometimes you got to groan until you get to the glory. Sometimes you can't even talk about it, but the Spirit will make intercession with God, mm -hmm. so we can stay connected and we can get what we need. Amen. So Paul talks about this incomparable glory. That's to be revealed. The, the glory that was talked about in the Old Testament. The glory that's going to be talked about in the New Testament. So it, the, it, it's, it's such a thing. Even though suffering brings on emotional pain. And terrible physical pain. And it's an intensity to increase to such a degree. Sometimes we scream with terror and pain. We think we can no longer endure. But the Apostle is saying that the intensity of the suffering we experience is not even a drop in the bucket. Compared with the intensity of the glory that is coming. Christ Amen. is coming back. Amen. And he's coming Amen. back in all his glory. Amen. And the Bible says we shall see him as he is. Amen. Amen. So we have to hold on to that even when we're suffering. Even when we're going through guilt and shame. We're not going to be spectators in this event. Because the glory is going to be revealed in us. Amen. Even when it talks about nature and the creation growing and being subject to, 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 to pain. You know, those of you who do flowers and plants, I see Mother Solomon got plants. Um, I have an aunt, my aunt's down south, would always say, you talk to the plants. Because the plants can hear you. The plants are alive. So you talk to the plants and they grow and you have fellowship with your little plants and in your garden. You know, it's all praise and glory to God. But the creation is growing. Can you imagine being a plant and you want to bloom, you want to stretch out, you want to put your leaves up. And you can't. You're a frustrated plant. Because you can't grow. Because the whole creation is groaning. Amen. Everything. It looks beautiful in nature, but it's decaying. Everything is spoiling. The government, the administration, the oil wells, the digging, the mines, the leveling of the trees is all being destroyed. And the creation is growing. Amen. Everything is decaying. But we know that when God comes... Everything in his glory is going to be <coughs> revealed. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's talk a little bit because I always like to give you some information. Let's go to the sheet that talks about child sexual abuse. Amen. We are groaning. We are suffering. And our babies, most of all, are suffering. Amen. Amen. So I just want to run through this, give you a little bit. What's my time? Ain't we going somewhere at a certain time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. We're going, going to heaven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the very first year to something. Okay. Um, types of sexual abuse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, sexual abuse is any encounter where a child is coerced implicitly or explicitly. Y'all, we on the sheet, the big sheet. So you need one bird? I got one. You got one? You um, um, Where the perpetrator is male or female. Amen. There's verbal, visual, physical contact, and psychological forms of abuse. Amen. Amen. There is incest. I say, oh my God. Oh my. Incest. What we don't talk about a lot in our community. Amen. It's like a taboo in our community. Things we're not supposed to talk about. Incest. Amen. Sex between close relatives. Sexual activity between two people who are considered for moral or genetic reasons too closely related to even be having such a relationship. Amen. But you know when I was researching this, I found so many incest sites. Brother, brother, sister, 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 mother. I was like, what? Some of, the, some of the stuff you don't get job, you can't look at this stuff. Like that, that don't even come up. But you, people are enjoying this, glorying in incest, glorying in things that are not of God, glorying in things that God says don't touch, pass by it, don't even look at it, go around it. Amen. And people are glorying in this stuff. But we are hurting and we are suffering. We need to reach out to our children, our neighbors, our sisters, our brothers, anybody on the job that you don't think is looking right, you need to pull them aside. Amen. Anything wrong? You want to talk about it? Can we talk? Amen. Incest, sexual encounters, mean <coughs> sexual conversation, pornography, nudity, looking, caressing, oral sex or sexual intercourse. You got to be aware of these things, y'all. These things are not of God. 
And this is how the sins of incest destroy us. And we have to, you know, I, I taught my kids early. I was a social worker, you know, social worker did foster care, so always around kids. And you know, you got to keep kids informed because they're so naive and they're so impressionable. I always teach my kids. I even talked to Samantha about it. I said, you remember good touch, bad touch? She said, yeah, mom. <laughs> you know, but you need to teach your kids where's a good touch, okay, and where's a bad touch. They need to know that. <clears throat> they need to be informed. That's right. You tell, you tell the secret. You better tell it. And I told Jay, I didn't I tell you, John, don't let nobody tell you, uh, I'm going to touch you, don't tell nobody. I'm going to tell your mom, I'm going to kill your mom. I'm going to kill your grandma. Because they threaten little kids. Mm -hmm. And they tell them this stuff. Mm -hmm. I told you, Anna, you said, you tell them your mom is licensed to carry. And if they try to do something to you, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Don't let them threaten you. You know that's the truth, Colette. You better tell them. <laughs> tell these little kids. Don't let them be intimidated. Don't let them be fearful. And talk to your kids. Yes. Yes. Make sure. Look at what they're watching on the internet. Amen? Amen. Because the enemy is shrewd. And he'll try to bring all kind of mess into your atmosphere. Amen? Sins of incest, bodily sin, it violates the integrity of the body. So many young girls have self-image problems. My body's not pretty. I don't like my body. I don't feel this way about my body. So, sins of incest, bodily sins, violate the integrity of the body. Emotional and psychological sin, it violates the child's sense of self-being. Their esteem goes out the window. No self-esteem. I'm not pretty. I'm ugly. I'm this. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. Relational sin. It betrays trust. So many older adults, women especially, have trust issues because of being violated when they were young. And they didn't talk about it, or they're just now starting to talk about it. So they're working through some stuff. And we have to be prepared as ministers of the gospel, you know, not to judge. Somebody say not to judge. Not to judge. But to come alongside. Because we got a comforter. Amen. 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 We have a comforter. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know, who knows how to comfort us, who knows how to take care of us. Amen. And you got some social sins from incest, and it sustains the secrets. Or somebody say the secrets. So you better tell it. Now I got some stats. Somebody say, Sister Friends, too early in the morning. Well, <laughs> do statistics. It's okay. We're going to do some statistics. All right. One of three girls and one of seven boys have been sexually abused by the age of 18. That's a whole lot of kids. That's a whole lot of kids. 95% of those who abuse girls and 80% of those who abuse boys are men. Girls are sexually abused three times more often than boys. But boys have a greater risk of emotional neglect and serious injury than girls. Because boys are not going to tell it. Right. And they're really going to internalize it. Because now their manhood is at stake. Especially if you've got a father who talks about be a man, be a man, boy, be a man, and you go to school and this teacher is molesting you. Mm -hmm. So you're a little boy in a bad situation. You can't tell your daddy telling you to be a man, so you internalize this. And then you grow up to be a man that's either effeminate because your sexual identity is confused, or you're a woman beater because you hate women and you got this rage and you just got to get it out. So we have all these issues and concerns. That's why it's important to talk to our children. The NIS Funded by the National Center on Child Abuse and Neglect. That's where all the stats come from. Amen. Average duration of an incestuous relationship is four years. I think Joyce Meyer said her father abused her longer. Yeah. yeah. It just went on longer. Yeah. Um, 11% of the victims were abused by age 5. 75% by age 12. Incest happens in all strata of society, all economic levels, and all ethnic groups. One of the major reasons women seek therapy is because of early sexual abuse. Our sister sitting in therapy, talking to therapists who sometimes probably don't even have a clue. In one state penitentiary, 100% of women inmates have been sexually abused as children. Mm. Mm. Wonder why they're in prison. Mm. Wonder why they're in prison. Because they didn't get the help. They didn't get the healing. Mm. <coughs> Every 21 and a half minutes in the United States, a person is sexually assaulted. Mm. That's not good. One in six women and one in 33 men. 44% of these victims are under the age of 18. 60 million adult survivors of incest and sexual abuse in the United States today. Often teens of unmet, unwed mothers, they are, they turn out to be unwed mothers if they've been sexually abused. And 95% of prostitutes were abused as kids. Amen. We're going to move on. That's about the incest. Talks about stepfathers are five times more likely to sexually abuse. A perpetrator abuses an average of 117 children now. I had a sister, this was another confirmation, I did a lesson Tuesday earlier this week, and, and we were talking about sin, and the origin of sin, and how Jesus came to die for our sins. But 
the sister was sharing how her daughter was raped when she was five or six or something like that. And they knew the guy who did it and how she wanted to kill him. She knew, and she this woman was serious. She wanted to kill this man. And, and she talked about how it took everything within her and how the power of Jesus Christ just, just had to literally just sit on her and how she had to rest in the word because she wanted to retaliate. Even so, that even when they found this man, because the little baby did tell, and he went to jail, he came home and spoke to the woman like, hey, sister so-and-so, like ain't nothing happened. And she said, it took all the God in me, all the God in her. So there's some things that's going to happen to us, y'all, happen to our babies, mm. things we're going to suffer through, but we got to know God is able. Yes. Yes. We got to know yes. that vengeance yes. is His. Yes. 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 We can't be doing stuff. Mm -hmm. We can't be praying wrong and thinking wrong. Mm -hmm. about, you know, we don't know what David said. We're going to leave David alone. <laughs> David said, get him, God, tear him up, rip him, lift him. <laughs> Curse the day they was born. But we need to pray. We just need to pray for the people in Boston, for the people in Tess, Texas, all this. Yes. We need to pray. We got to pray because if you're mad and angry and then you holding stuff, then you got another issue with the anger. And you're trying to help your baby get through a situation where she'd have been violated. So much stuff is going on. So many unclean spirits are working. Mm -hmm. So many things are upset in, in the balance now and in the household. We have to be focused and we have to pray to help one another through these situations. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about another interesting type of sexual abuse I found called SRA. SRA is Satanic Ritualistic Abuse. Now, I need y'all to know this. So when you are working in ministry and you're working in the field and you see now, the incest thing is all across different stratas and economic, social situations. This satanic, ritualistic abuse tends to happen to white women between the ages of 18 to 25. So there's a need that our Caucasian sisters have that needs to be met and it's not being met. So when you're on your job, you got some Caucasian folks on your job, we need to be in tune, make sure this other stuff is not going on. You know, when you see some signs and some stuff that look demonic in people mm -hmm. or not right in people, you got to pray. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to call that stuff out so they can get delivered. Amen? Amen. Satanic ritualistic abuse is abuse, a brutal form of abuse of children, adolescents, and adults consisting of physical, sexual, and psychological abuse involving the use of rituals as a part of satanic worship. Secretive family cults are passed down through the generations. These involve participation and indoctrination of children beginning at an early age. <coughs> SRA seeks to de-self a person in order to allow Satan to possess them. To possess their mind, their body, and their soul. Now, the worship of Satan is marked by the ridicule of Christian things. You know, Satanists, those involved in Satanism, they mock our practices such as prayer, fasting, and communion. Amen? Now here's the deep thing about the SRA, the hard facts about satanic ritualistic abuse. <clears throat> and when you're dealing with these spirits, and you come across these spirits, you've got to be able to identify this thing. you got to be able to identify it, cast it out, call it out, whichever way the Holy Spirit tells you to do with it. Sometimes you might just say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We ain't even messing with this. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. And that's it. We leave it alone and keep it moving. But here are just some examples. Um, a young teenage girl is impregnated, thank you, during a satanic ritual. She's forcibly delivered of her nearly term baby, forced to ritually kill the child, mm. and then cannibalize its heart as cult members watch. Another girl, small child, is sealed inside the cavity of a disemboweled animal and rebirthed by her cultic captors during a ceremony. Mm. A preschool class is systematically, sexually, emotionally, and physically abused by a part of a nationwide and nearly invincible network of satanic pedophiles and pornographers. This child pornography thing is out of control. And as a young girl, this woman just really got me, <clears throat> a young girl is thrown into an electrified cage with wolves and ritually tortured to deliberately produce a wolf personality. Mm -hmm. Part of her multiple personality disorder. Now, I work in addiction, so I've seen all kind of bipolar, PTSD, and there is something called multiple personality disorder, mm -hmm. sort of like Sybil. Y'all remember Sybil? Mm -hmm. All the people that was in Sybil? Well, there are people who are intentionally trying to break your mind down so Satan can possess you and you can take on another nature or another spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we have to be aware of the crazy stuff. And it was so deep is that as people get older and they begin to relive, relive these stories, they call them the memories. The memories will start coming back and they'll start trying to tell somebody and people won't believe them. They like we know that did not happen to you or your mother and father didn't do that Betsy you don't need to be saying that stuff mm. but we need to be what they call true believers and listen to these people 
when they start to tell their stories, amen, they tell terrifying accounts. They talk about stranger abduction. They talk about numbers of thousands of people. And how these things involve key players in the court.